Can you believe that the first Mission Impossible movie came out in 1996? 27 years later, now we're talking about the seventh film? How crazy is that? What's up everyone, Renee Loki Geek here, and I am going to be talking about Mission Impossible 7. That is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And like I said before, it's been 27 years of non-stop action, crazy espionage, twists and turns, and Tom Cruise running his ass off. So how does this movie stack up to all the other adventures that we've got in the past? Well, keep watching and find out. Now, like many people, I love the Mission Impossible franchise. It's one of those things that I hold very dear to my heart because when the first movie came out in 96, it was one of the last movies that I actually saw in the theaters with my mom. Not that my mom passed away or anything, it's just she doesn't go to theaters and watch movies anymore. But I remember enjoying it with her and it really helped me understand at that appeal and that draw that Tom Cruise has as an actor. And I think it's safe to say, especially after Top Gun Maverick last year, that Tom Cruise is one of the last true Hollywood movie superstars out there that still can draw that crowd and draw interest into the things that he does. With Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, you go in into it wondering, well, what more can we see him do? How much more can he push the envelope in this action adventure franchise that he helped bring into prominence? And he does a lot of great stuff in this film, but it's not just him. And like many of the other Mission Impossible movies, it also has to do a lot with the ensemble he has around him. And I have to say that everyone in this movie brought their A game. And I would say it's probably one of the best like jam packed action blockbuster movies that we've gotten in a while. However, when it comes to a Mission Impossible story, mm, I have some thoughts. In Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Ethan Hunt and the IMF team must track down a terrifying new weapon that threatens all of humanity if it falls into the wrong hands. With control of the future and the fate of the world at stake, a deadly race around the globe begins. Confronted by a mysterious all-powerful enemy, Ethan is forced to consider that nothing can matter more than the mission, not even the lives of those he cares about most. So when it comes to story here, and I, I want to get this out of the way, because the main thing that you are familiar with when it comes to like the Mission Impossible movies is there's always a certain task at hand and he has to work within his team to accomplish this task. And of course the, ca the task seems impossible, hence the title, but they somehow pull it off. But it's that adventure and the ride that we get to be taken through, the thrill of it, the consequences, the build up and leading up to it. Those are a lot of the things that we really appreciate about these Mission Impossible movies. And most of the time, as we're seeing that play out, we get treated to some of the great action sequences that these movies now offer. Now with this movie, I really truly feel like it was a setup movie. Knowing that we're getting a part two after this, I do feel like there was a lot of build up and setup. I didn't get the sense that there was a lot of these like crazy twists and turns and crazy things that you have to plot against and all, at least not in a way that we are accustomed to from the previous movies. A lot of it at times felt very reactionary, you know, kind of like Ethan Hunt and the crew are reacting to things that are transpiring around them. And this is definitely one of those movies where things don't always go the way we expect them to go. And one of the interesting things that you find out in this movie, and, and we get some of it in like the past movies too, is that we really get to know Ethan a lot more and I feel like Ethan's past really comes back to haunt him and it's kind of like these are the consequences for some of the things that you were involved in and done in the past and it really really hits home in this movie and quite possibly what we could see transpire within part two as well. And I would say this is probably one of the few times that we actually see Ethan go off the rails and off the path away from his team because we see that, you know, we always notice that Ethan has that kind of rage within him. And I feel like that really displays very fully here. And it gets to the point where it's almost as if he is a lone wolf, which in itself 
creates some certain consequences as well that you see play out through the film. And that's pretty much all I can say without really spoiling anything. But bottom line, Tom Cruise is really at his peak here. And he is, there's really no stopping him. And his portrayal of Ethan Hunt continues to like rise and grow. And he brings it. He really truly brings it in this movie. But outside of that, Haley Atwell is a welcomed huge welcome addition to this cast and to this franchise and i feel like if you are not familiar at all with her you are definitely gonna notice her now after this and it's well deserved because not only is she a looker on screen wow she is so good when it comes to the action beats now of course many of you may be familiar with her from her roles as peggy carter within the marvel universe and all that but i feel like that only scratched the surface here you really see the full potential of what she's capable of as an actress and as like a heroine, as a action star. And she is really in there toe to toe with uh, Tom Cruise. And my gosh, if it ever gets to the point where Tom Cruise is like, you know what, I'm gonna take a step back and maybe I'm not gonna do a lot of these action things anymore. And maybe I can be more of like the director and kind of like the behind the scenes guy. I can totally see a time when Haley Atwell steps into like the Ethan Hunt type of role because she is more than capable of doing it. But it's not just her, like the ensemble is so good, especially because we are seeing characters that we are so familiar with from the past movies. Rebecca Ferguson is amazing. Vanessa Kirby is so good. Another new addition is Palm Clementiev. We already know her as her character Mantis, but again, just scratch the surface. Here in this movie, she has this one fight scene with Tom Cruise that is so raw and brutal like I couldn't believe what I was watching. And of course it's always great to see Simon Pegg come back and Ving Ring. It's always a great treat. S.I. Morales as like the big baddie here. I mean he plays this type of character that has potential to be very menacing. He had to take over after Nicholas Holt wasn't able to play this role. And I think he did a really great job as well but I also do feel like his character has yet to be truly realized. Or there are just some things missing there. But I think longtime fans of the franchise will just get a huge kick out of the return of Henry Zerny portraying the character of Agent Kittredge. And if you remember his relationship with Ethan Hunt in the first movie, it's just so amazing to see them interact again after all these years. Bad blood's still there, I tell you that. And that's another thing I really appreciated about this movie too, is that I do feel like it's almost a full circle moment because there were a lot of nods, in my opinion, to the very first movie. So they did a really good job at not only keeping things fresh, but paying homage to a lot of the things that they covered through previous films that you as a fan of the franchise would truly appreciate. But the big point of this movie and one of the reasons why many of you out there will go watch this film is because of the action sequences. Action, 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 in your face craziness out of all the Mission Impossible films. This one hands down has probably the most absurd, crazy, full-blown action sequences long action sequences too. Some of these sequences are, just feel like they take forever, but they really swing for the fences in this one. From crazy ass car chases, to previously mentioned raw and brutal fight scenes, to the very now famous Tom Cruise flying off a damn cliff, crazy fighting on top of trains and within trains and escaping trains. My God, it's like everything in the kitchen sink they threw at you. And my feeling throughout the whole time when I was watching it, it was just like gripping on my, my seat and just be like, what's happening? What is this gonna end? Ooh, watch out, what are you doing? That's the best thing that this movie really captured is just that intense thrill of watching these characters go through all of those crazy action moments. And really, this is the main reason why I would say you should go out and watch this movie, because if you're a huge fan of all that stuff, then this is the movie that you want to see. This is your summer movie. If you were waiting for a great time at the theater and you didn't go out and watch The Flash, you decided not to go out and watch Indiana Jones, or maybe you did and you're just like, mm, maybe I shouldn't have done that. This is the movie that you should probably go out and see if you have been waiting for that full-blown, action-thrilled excitement watching this type of film in the theater. If you want to get that type of feeling, 
especially during opening week when you have a bunch of other people looking for that, this is the movie that will do it for you. Now, would I compare it to a movie like Top Gun Maverick like we got last year? Not quite, but the one thing I always say is that you never discount Tom Cruise. Like He will make sure that butts are in seats and that when you go out and choose to watch his movie, you'll be thoroughly entertained. And I do feel like you will be thoroughly entertained in this film. Now, with all that being said, I have to bring it back to the Mission Impossible story aspect of it all. And if I were to compare this movie as a standalone and rank it with the rest of the films that we already got, I can see myself rank this movie somewhere in the middle or possibly a little bit towards the bottom. However, that could possibly and has the potential to change once we get part two. Because whatever transpires in part two can help explain and maybe allow us to appreciate a lot more of what happened in this film when everything comes to the realization in the continuation. Going into it knowing that this is a part one, that's just something I couldn't get out of my head. And watching it, I could feel, yeah, there's still more to come here. And that's why I felt like some of the story was lacking quite a bit. Or maybe a lot of the things that were happening felt a little bit more convoluted and complex complex more than it should be but I truly feel like once part two comes around then a lot of stuff will be fully realized and explained and maybe it will allow me to appreciate the story elements of part one more but I feel like you could truly see how this franchise has progressed and how at least in this film the full-blown action sequences this is probably one of the first times that those elements of the film took over the story elements. So I'm hoping that we could get reeled in a little bit more in part two, but only time will tell and we'll wait and see when that movie comes out. Now, the last thing I will say about this movie is that it is a long movie, almost three hours long. And at times it does feel it. There are only a few times when I felt some of the Mission Impossible films from the past felt long or felt like it was dragging. But this is the first time where there are moments where I felt like, wow, this is a long movie. And I've been watching a lot of Mission Impossible today. And when you sit down and think about it, you realize that a lot of those times were really just because of the action moments and it's amazing how a lot of those action moments just seem to have taken a long time and were a huge chunk of the film as a whole but still i was entertained and i enjoyed it and i didn't mind it as much but i'm pretty sure mileage will vary and some of you may consider that to be a negative aspect of the film but with all that being said at the end of the day i gave this a four out of five stars i did like it but the reason why i gave it four was because i really really loved and appreciated all the action beats and the action in this film if i were to give the rating based solely on the mission impossible story aspects of it it'd probably be closer to a three but that's where i'll stop and i'll continue with hearing about what all of you think out there is mission impossible dead reckoning part one a movie that you're looking forward to when it hits theaters are you a fan of the franchise or do you feel like it's run its course already and you'd rather watch tom cruise do something else let me know all your thoughts in the comments below and if you happen to have already seen this movie i'm curious to hear about your thoughts as well no spoilers in the comments please Obviously, there's a lot of people out there who haven't seen it yet. That's about it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget, hit that like button. If you're brand new to this channel and you want to see more of this type of content, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time a new video is posted. If you want to further help support the channel and help the channel grow, one great way to do so is to follow us on your podcast platform of choice. Just type in Loki Geek and you'll find the podcast channel there where we will find the movie time movie review podcast I do with my buddy Blake and the talking talk pop culture news of the moment podcast for your downloading and listening pleasure. Plus, if you check out the description of the video, you'll find a lot of affiliates that we have partnered with. You may be introduced to some new brands or find some cool deals for yourself or for a loved one. And by participating, you'll be helping support this channel at no additional cost to you. And for all of that support, I am truly thankful. So I'm going to head on out for now. Until next time, stay cool, stay classy, safe. Catch you all in the next one. All right, peace out, y'all.